Two months ago, property owners at two Southside apartment complexes put the well-being of Indianapolis residents in jeopardy by withholding payments from Citizens Energy, payments they, that these property owners had already collected from their tenants. Those property owners put families at risk, pure and simple. Today, those very same entities have once again threatened the health, the happiness, and the homes of our neighbors. Roughly 1,200 Indianapolis households could lose water service due to inaction by their building's owners. Today, this office has joined with Citizens Energy and the Indiana State Attorney General's Office to file three separate lawsuits. That means three separate actions, each pursuing different claims and thereby maximizing the leverage that we possess. Ultimately, our aim is to hold these property owners accountable using every available tool to keep residents in their homes and a clear and clear a path for responsible ownership. Because the truth is this, failure of a landlord to pay utility bills leads to a stop in service. And if a multi-unit resident, and if that unit as a residence has no water, the health department has no choice but to close it down. And when a building is closed, our neighbors lose their homes. As the city seeks to promote housing stability in the wake of a pandemic, these landlords instead threaten to leave tenants homeless. We cannot allow people to be put in this position. And we cannot allow the taxpayers to be expected to cover a landlord's negligence. Today, we stand united, stepping in ahead of what would otherwise be a mass eviction on a scale yet unseen in this community. Together, we will take this property owner to court three times over with the goal of securing responsible ownership for these properties. And so I want to recognize the Indiana State Attorney General's Office, represented today by the Director of Consumer Protection, Scott Barnhart, and Citizens Energy President and CEO, Jeff Harrison. I also want to recognize the elected officials present with us today, because they too have played a critical role in identifying further solutions for tenants across Indianapolis. Today's coordinated effort between a utility, a state agency, and a local unit of government is unprecedented in the fight for housing stability in our city. And it will take continued action at every level to protect tenants and to hold bad actors accountable. So it is in that spirit that I introduce the president and the CEO of Citizens Energy Group, my friend Jeff Harrison. Jeff. Thank you, Joe, and thank you everyone for being here today. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Attorney General uh, Todd Rakita for the actions they have announced regarding Berkeley Commons and JPC affordable housing. Earlier this week, Citizens announced that it has filed a complaint in commercial court in Marion County, Indiana against Berkeley Commons, Indiana LLC and JPC Affordable Housing Foundation, Inc., seeking repayment of past due utility bills and other expenses totaling more than $1.3 million. As outlined in our complaint, Citizens is seeking repayment of past due bills totaling approximately $344,000 from Berkeley Commons Indiana LLC, which operates Berkeley Commons Apartments, 
The utility also is seeking repayment of past due bills totaling approximately $956,000 from JPC Affordable Housing Foundation, which operates the Capitol Place Apartments and the Woods at Oak Crossing at 3120 Knobscott Drive, Indianapolis. Over the past year, Berkeley Commons and JPC Affordable Housing have consistently failed to make utility payments on many of their accounts. To avoid disconnection of utility service, citizens attempted to recoup overdue funds with payment arrangements. But Berkeley Commons and JPC Affordable Housing have broken them as well. Residents of these apartment complexes pay their water, sewer, and natural gas bills as part of their rent payments to this property owner, whom citizens bills as its customer rather than the tenants. In addition to repayment of past due utility bills, Citizens is requesting creation of a constructive trust over each of the defendant's funds being collected from tenants for water, sewer, and natural gas utility services. We are hopeful this legal action against Berkeley Commons LLC and JPC Affordable Housing will result in the repayment of past due bills and payment of future bills so residents of the apartment complexes have continued access to utility service without remaining customers having to bear the cost of the apartment owner's unbilled utility bills, unpaid utility bills. Protecting customers from the cost of unpaid bills is especially important here in Marion County where more than 20% of our customers are low income. So I'd like to thank you again for being here today as, as we work together to protect the residents of these apartments and all of our citizens and customers. I would now like to introduce Scott Barnhart, Chief Counsel and Director of Consumer Protection in the Office of the Attorney General. Scott. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Mayor Hogsetts and Jeffrey Harrison. This is a, a coordinated effort with the Attorney General's Office, particularly the Consumer Protection Division, our mission is to prevent business practices in Indiana that are unlawful, deceptive, or fraudulent through education or litigation, if necessary, and doing so without unduly burdening legitimate business endeavors. Litigation is necessary in this instance. In this case, we have history in terms of prior litigation against Lakeside Point and other entities. In this instance, litigation is necessary to protect the Hoosiers from suffering who need help from these apartment complexes that have uh, dilapidated living conditions and unsafe living conditions. Nonprofit housing entities are providing crucial, crucial bridges to providing appropriate and safe housing. In this instance, we give them um, credits, tax credits and other benefits for uh, providing this, this crucial benefit to the community. And in this instance, we believe in our complaint through the allegations that we have raised that they are not meeting their obligations under the law in this circumstance. We maintain that low-income Hoosiers in these complexes have had their lives severely disrupted by the chaos of mismanagement and are looking forward to the process and the litigation to make these allegations and prove them with evidence in court to make sure that these Hoosiers are looked after and their safety and their well-being are um, first and foremost taken care of. With that, I will open it up for questions, I believe. Uh, the figure that we were working with in, I believe, February going into March was 1.3 million owed to Citizens Energy. The city came up with 850,000. This, this plan doesn't address the city's 850,000, but you're already back up to another $1.3 million total? Yeah. That, that is correct. We are, we are up to $1.3 million total again. And again, as you, you stated that correctly, currently um, the city is owed 850,000, citizens owed 1.3 million. Because citizens got 850,000 from the city. From the city. But, but the city at is- that time, another 850,000 is approved. That is, that is so correct. $1.3 million happens to be a coincidental number. That is correct. Uh, so just for you, um, what's being done for those, those tenants? Are they in danger of eviction or is citizens taking action to keep the water on and keep them, keep them in their house? Yeah, so citizens, have, we have stayed um, a disconnection for, for the moment. Um, we are continuing to work 
again with the Attorney General's office and with Mayor Hawksett and his team. Um, we'll continue in this in this phase until again we, we believe we, we, we have no other choice at that time. Um, and if we do need to disconnect, we do need to issue a disconnect notice. Um, we will notify those residents. Um, we are looking at, at trying to give them uh, enough time and, and, and enough support and help uh, to allow them to find uh, homes elsewhere. So we, we'd be looking at um, somewhere around 30 days if a disconnect notice um, were needed to be to be um, uh, executed. What would trigger that decision to uh, disconnect? Um, we don't have a definitive uh, answer to that right now. We're still working through this legal action. Um, so uh, results from this process um, will dictate uh, likely dictate when again a disconnect could, could likely take place. Does that mean you'll hold off until this plays out at least through the court process? No, um, it, it means that we'll continue. This, this is an evolving process, as you might imagine. Um, we'll continue to talk and work with our partners here to determine um, the best time uh, for, for this. Well, there's never a best time, but determine a time when a disconnect is really uh, the, the only course of action that we can take. So, Mayor, do you expect 30, 60 days from now, Citizens Energy to shut off the water and the city to be on the hook again for another $850,000? You told us one morning, you said, this is not like a green flag for any other apartment owner to think we're just going to bail people out continuously. Well, uh, I defer to, to Donnie Morgan. Obviously, we will be seeking through these um, various uh, causes of action uh, recoupment of the uh, $850,000 that we have uh, forwarded uh, to protect the residents initially. Um, and uh, I would hope that with this coordinated action, uh, separate lawsuits, one filed by the city, one filed by citizens, one filed by the state uh, in the Attorney General's office uh, will go a long way toward helping us uh, resolve this matter uh, in whatever way is most reasonable for the residents uh, at these apartment complexes. I would hope that we could convince the current property owner to sell the properties to a more responsible property owner, but uh, we are taking this unprecedented coordinated legal action to seek resolution of this issue. Donnie, you want to clarify anything that I've left out? Uh, thank you, Mayor. R Russ, in response to your first question, so yes, the city is, in addition to the $1.3 million citizen is, citizens is seeking in its lawsuit, the city's lawsuit is seeking the city's $850,000. So part of the reason the city uh, made that payment, of course, um, back in late winter was to restore water service to those two properties. But another part of that is that the city and citizens entered into an assignment agreement. So the city now has the right to go collect that debt directly from the property owner. So the city's lawsuit has breach of contract claims and account stated claims to, uh, to recover that money for the city. Well, I understand the recruitment, but I'm asking about in the future, if on Jan June 1st, citizens comes to the mayor and says, sorry guys, they've done it to us again, we've got no choice. Even though you said in the past this is no green flag for other people to pull this move in the future, do you expect that the city and the taxpayers are going to have to pony up another $850,000? Well, I, I expect that we will have successfully resolved this matter prior to that uh, date. And I can't uh, necessarily forecast at this point in time what legal options would be available to us um, if such were to occur. So. <clears throat> I understand the nature of your question. I just remain optimistic that with this collaborative approach, um, we have maximized the leverage collectively and that by the next deadline, uh, we will have the matter successfully resolved. And the next deadline would be? Uh, I'll defer to citizens in that, in that regard. Again, yeah, yeah. And th this, this is unprecedented. We, we've never experienced anything uh, like this, so, so we're, we're, um, we're, we're learning as we go here. And so we, we don't have a definitive deadline uh, as of now. Again, our, our teams are talking um, and we'll make a decision on when we believe, uh, again, that a disconnect notice um, is really the, the proper course of action, but there is no definitive deadline. You can see though how that would be unsettling for people in those homes right now. You might not be hanging a tag on their door today if this press conference is a warning to them they might lose their homes. So. It does seem like some kind of clarity would be helpful for them to understand what the process looks like and what might trigger a necessary shutoff, in your opinion. 
I, I think that's absolutely true. And I think that uh, we've been working with Citizens Energy for the last year on this point, right? So in terms of having a, a date certain is, is difficult to come by. But the, the residents can look to, uh, you know, the prior litigation settlement in Lakeside and, and other uh, um, litigation like that as hope and encouragement that this um, potentially gets successfully resolved. That's why we have the court system. That's why we have a judicial process. And from that standpoint, there are, uh, there are things we can do in that process. But Citizens has been cooperative through this entire process and has worked with us and stayed in communication, communication with us the entire time. Commissioner Harrison, residents are concerned. I spoke to one this morning. She said she's continuing to pay her bills. She's wondering where her money is. What advice do you have for the residents to just ease of their concerns? You know, I, and, and again, our heart goes out to these to these residents. Um, unfortunately, they're, they're they're paying their bill right now to their their landlord. Their landlord, in turn, is not. Um, they're just not paying citizens um, the the utilities that, that that they are due. Um, I can only, I can, and again, the, the, the tenants and the landlord have that contractual agreement that we are not a part of, and, 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 and so again, there's, there's, there's very little that we can do other than urge those tenants to continue to, to, to put pressure on their landlord um, to, pay that, to pay that utility bill and work with us. Um, we, we've tried to enter into payment arrangements with them, and, and so we'll get a question uh, many oftentimes, uh, why is the number so high? And it's because we, our, our goal is not to disconnect. We don't want to disconnect. Um, this apartment complex or any apartment complex. However, um, we have the fiduciary duty to balance the needs of this apartment complex with the, with the rest of our customers, and it's a constant struggle trying to balance those two things. And so there will come a time, unfortunately, if this, if this landlord um, does not pay their utility bill, that we will unfortunately have to, have to disconnect. All these lawsuits ask for payment. Is there anything that can be done punitively or to try to get this owner to sell the properties? Uh, well, uh, I'll defer to the lawyers in terms of punitive <laughs> action. Uh, Donnie is. So with the city's lawsuit, um, the, the first thing is to secure a judgment that we're owed the money. Once you secure a judgment, both as a practical matter um, and perhaps with some sort of creative legal maneuvering, that will open up some tools for the city to exert additional leverage on the owner. Um, or potentially, as the mayor said, to get these properties into the hands of more responsible owners. Um, so there certainly are some tools that the city will have with its own lawsuit um, should it uh, get to a, a judgment, which we hope to happen relatively quickly. Um, I'll defer to Mr. Barnhart as to the state's lawsuit. So to, to answer that, finish that with that question, there are, there are tools, particularly under the nonprofit statute, to. Uh, addressed in terms of waste that means it perhaps means dissolution of the entity and relief that we sought in our complaints um, but there are mechanisms by which that uh, we can ask for relief from the court who are these owners and where are they so they are not for profit there are, it's a, a series of entities um, there are it's a suffice it to say a complex ownership structure uh, but they are based out of Ohio in one instance and in uh, New York New Jersey I believe so previously, I talked to Justin, and we were talking. He was saying they were look, he was looking at ways to go after their nonprofit status. Are you looking into that as well? Where do we stand? That's that's the nature of this of this suit is to challenge in terms of uh, their status as a nonprofit and to look for in terms of injunctive relief or dissolution based on the wasting of of assets and their inability to serve their their purpose, their nonprofit purpose under the statute. Why will this lawsuit be successful when the one filed last summer by the attorney? I would argue that it was successful in terms of the resolution and the settlement that we received in, in uh, sale of that property to another entity. I, that is success to me. Should people who live at these complexes be looking for a new place? I, I would say Indiana does not have withholding uh, in terms of rent withholding, so paying their rent. Uh, and certainly in terms of ha having other options or looking for other options is, is something that, that if I were a resident of, the, of these locations, I would seriously consider. I think in terms of the there are different types of legal actions, different types of legal complaints in terms of the issues that are raised. So whether they're you know in terms of the strategy of whether it's one lawsuit or three, it's it's coming at it from a, a, a different angle in terms of contract based on the city's uh, angle, 
the recovery based on the citizen's angle in terms of contract as well. Our angle is, is a different angle in light of the not-for-profit statute. So that's why I think why you have a coordinated effort but three separate lawsuits. Thanks, everybody. We have press releases coming out from each of the entities represented today. We're going to uh, be able to help get you case numbers if you need those case numbers as well. Um, and then I know we might have the city lawyers stick around a little bit if you need any follow-up questions on that. Uh, I don't know about maybe some of the partners might stick around a little bit for, for clarification on any of those too. So, all right. Thanks, everybody.